Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about current customers. And there's a bunch of gems of awesomeness. So if you have customers or you don't have customers, this is going to be a killer episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you love everything. You have hundreds of episodes to catch up on, so get listening or watching. It's available on YouTube or SoundCloud or anything else. Uh, But I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. And full disclosure, I make money if I put in your order. So, of course, that's what I want to do. I want to be your rep. I want to be the person that you let put in your orders. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And I get credit for it. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. And you need supplies. So why not let me, little old me, put your orders in? My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. You can call me. You can text me. You can do whatever. And let me know. Uh, I would love to put the orders in. Shoot me a text. Say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And I can put it in. Costs you nothing extra. Uh, What does cost you but makes you money in the long run is AWC Magazine, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Uh, That is the greatest magazine for window cleaners. It's been around since 1986, and I know you want a subscription. Yes, paper subscription, mailed to your door every single month. You get stickers, you get awesomeness, cool articles, awesome posters. Do it. Do it. Go to awcmag.com, awcmag.com forward slash sub. Okay. Shameless plugs out of the way, Uh, but today uh, we are talking about current customers. And I have to say, this is some of the coolest, like most profitable gems that I have ever like focused on. These are the things that have made me the most money, have been the biggest game changers. And this past couple weeks, we've had so many people who have taken little things we've talked about and tried them. Oh, geez, people who have done this forever, they've taken things and kind of just, I'll give it a try, right? Uh, Bidding over the phone, um, uh, different clips, setups, um, styles, things like that. And if you're in a growth season, if you're doing any of that and you're changing little things, you're being better. So I thought, you know what? Let's do a... Uh, uh, show on everything and it's all based on existing customers now your current customers already trust you they already like you they already know your quality that's the hardest part the hardest part of the cost of acquisition right it's the hardest part of it it's the cost of acquisition is when you spend x amount of money and get x amount of customers it costs you that much money now i know if you are so busy you don't advertise that we're not talking to you because you have no acquisition you're not acquiring new customers maybe word of mouth but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about paid acquisition that's the expensive part say hypothetically you spend a thousand dollars a month on advertising and you get 10 new customers right that is a hundred dollars per customer you have to spend to get a new customer those are terrible numbers (laughs) It's a terrible example, right? But that's expensive. When you get an existing customer, they already like you. You don't have to, you just got to bring stuff up to them. Just talk to them. So there's a lot of ways that you can utilize the customers that you already have. And it is huge for increasing your business. And I hope even you OGs out there, anybody who's listening, I hope you try some of this stuff. And I hope that it uh, blows you away. It blows you away. So anyway, on the cost of acquisition and the customer itself, you already have customers. A hundred customers, a thousand customers, it doesn't matter. Don't forget those customers because they are the ones that you can get to buy so much easier, so much cheaper. And the first one is the call list. When I'm recording this, it is March. We're getting into coming up close to the season where the call list is going to happen. I did call this twice a year, spring, fall, right? Now we'll talk about uh, different closes later and the dentist close and all that stuff. But 
there's still people who are not in your calendar. There just is, right? Especially if you're new to changing kind of how this goes. So what you're doing is going into your CRM, say you use QuickBooks, whatever you use, pulling a list on just the customer's phone numbers, just your contact information, all of the customers you've had, right? Maybe, maybe your customers moved, they don't use you anymore, that was a one-time thing, it doesn't matter because they already have used you one time. I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna let them know, hey, we're putting together our spring schedule and I just didn't see you on there. I'd love to get you in there. Uh, is there a specific day of week that works best for you? Or a specific day that you need uh, to have service done by? And we got to get those people back on the calendar because once they're on the calendar, you can then upsell current things. You can dentist close and we'll talk about that in a bit. But getting them back on because if you leave it to them, they'll forget you. They don't know you like you think they know you. They know you when they're in their brain, but guess what? If somebody gets their windows cleaned last week, they already forgot about your company. They already forgot about your company until six months, maybe, a year, maybe, when they need you again. Oh, I gotta hire that nice guy. He was, no one's sitting in the middle of July thinking about you, right? They're just not. Window cleaning's our life, but it's not customers, right? So we need to be the ones that prompt them. So customer lists are big. Now, one thing you want to do with a customer list to do it right is to pull your calendar, look at all the names that are on there, take them off the list. So you're not calling somebody like, I'd love to get you on the calendar. Oh, we're already booked for two weeks from now, right? So pulling the names off the calendar, making that list right does take some time, but it's absolutely important. And that is literally my spiel. I call, hey, Mrs. Jones is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. And I slow that part down because they never can hear you on the phone. This is uh, Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. And uh, we're putting together our spring schedule. And I didn't see you on there. So I thought I would call and uh, see uh, if you have a date in mind or if there's a day a week that works best for you. Well, I didn't say, do you want to be on the calendar? I didn't say, you know, can we get you back on the calendar? I didn't give them a yes or no answer uh, or a yes or no question that they could answer with no or they could answer with any of that. I'd love to get you on the calendar. Uh, did you have a specific day in mind or did you have a day a week that works best for you? What that does is it prompts them to get rid of an instant no. An instant no is a defense mechanism by people, right? If you go into a place, hey, I'd love to give you a quote. No, nope, we're good. That's a defense. Turn it off. I'm uncomfortable. Out of my range. I caught off guard. No. But if you take that out, then you get real answers, right? If you put that in and Mrs. Jones go, oh, you know what? Uh, actually, you know, we're probably going to, money's tight this year. Uh, you know, Tom lost his job and we're just going to have to cut back a little. You know, they're going to let you know more than just a no by the way you ask the question. Now, this is just in general kind of uh, sales. If you haven't done anything in research and sales, do it. It helps you in every aspect of your life. But it's the way you ask, the way you put it in. And I'm telling you, I've had so many people who are like, oh my gosh, thank you for reminding me. I would have forgotten. Yeah, that definitely. Let's get it in. I got a uh, Mother's Day uh, party we do usually. Can you get it in before that? Absolutely, right? I've had in all of the years I've done that, which is probably 10 years of doing the call list twice a year, I probably maybe two or three times had somebody be like, what? What are you calling me for? I'm on a do not call list or something. They'll say something like that. Oh, hey, I can absolutely take you off, but we uh, did service you. We cleaned your windows uh, last year on the 12th of uh, April. If you remember, we were the ones in the, the blue shirts. My name is Jersey. Uh, but I'll take you off if you, oh, 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 yes, I'm sorry. I thought you were, every time they find out who you are, they're happy. They're, they're good with it. Even if they get everything done and they don't want it done that time. Uh, no, you know what? We were just kind of trying services. We're searching around. Hey, absolutely. I completely understand. If anything changes, let me know. Otherwise, you know, maybe towards the end of the year or so, I'll reach back out and see if we can do anything for you. But you have my number. Again, Jersey with XYZ, and I definitely appreciate all the service we've been able to do in the past, right? You get to go ahead and 
make that happen. You get to be the one that puts that all out there. So it really, really makes a bunch of sense in the call list. The call list is huge. The call list is catching all the people that fell through the cracks. It's the call list. Twice a year, you're not bugging people. For you, you think, oh my gosh, I'm calling all the time. But guess what? Who, Who's called you or, or sent you emails or postcards? Like all the stuff that you think you're bothering people, it's not. It's not. You get like... McDonald's coupons in every mail, you know, that you pull out of there, there's coupons. Nobody's ever been like, oh, this McDonald's, oh, they're driving me crazy, right? Low pressure does not upset people. If you just call them and say, hey, I want to put you on the calendar, and they go, oh, you know what, we're not interested. Oh, cool, well, let me know if anything changes. You know you have our number, and we'll reach back out uh, uh, towards the end of the year. Oh, cool, okay, right? But guess what? The biggest influx of customers that have fallen through is always from the call list. So do it. Another big one that you have the complete potential to do is emails. You have customer emails. You have customers. You can say to them, hey, I'd love to put you on our um, our email block. You can always unsubscribe if it's not for you. But there's always like coupons and like discounts and things in there that you can always use. And why not save some money if you can, you know? Sometimes people go, ah, no, I'm all right. Most times, they're like, yeah, definitely. Because when I'm taking their information, I'm writing it down all already, even when I'm getting their estimate, I get the email because I'm going to say, hey, I'll email you a copy of the estimate. And we'll put you in on the uh, newsletter too, just so you can keep current, even if you decide not to go with us, right? As long as you're disclosing or asking to be put on that, you can do that. You have customers. Again, if you have 100 customers, and only 100 customers, you potentially have 100 emails. Even if 75% say yes, which is way lower than it's ever been for me, right? It's like 99.2% would be the ones that can go through with me, right? But say 75%, you have 75 emails that you can send stuff to. And again, if somebody doesn't want to, they just click on subscribe. Remember, media and advertising, the new way it works It's like if you're driving down the street and there's a bunch of billboards. It's not interrupting you. It's just there, right? Facebook ads, they're just there. Same thing with emails. They're just there. If somebody says, hey, you know what? I'm cleaning up my inbox. They'll take them off. A lot of people won't even open them. It's up to you then to build a great email, build a great subject line so that people open your emails. But the email itself doesn't bother people. It doesn't bother people, but it keeps you relevant and Guess what? It costs you $0. The hardest part is collecting emails because I'm guaranteeing that most of you haven't. Most of you haven't. And a lot of you probably have, but most of you have gone, yeah, I got a couple, but I, I don't really ask. I feel uncomfortable. Well, okay. I understand the uncomfortableness in all this, but let me put a question out to you. Now, if you don't get anything from this, at least in the understanding Let me put this out there. I've had people before say, you know what? I don't call my existing customers because I just don't want to bother them. You know, we're just happy when they come back, they come back. That's, I understand if you're selling or giving them something they do not want. But if somebody calls you, books an appointment for window cleaning, and you make their windows look awesome, have you ever had somebody where you clean their windows and they're like, "Ugh, ugh, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for cleaning my windows. No, people are happy. They're like, oh my gosh, it looks so awesome. They called you because they wanted the service. You did the work. They were so happy. Remember how happy you made them. Well, I want to make my customers happy like that all the time. It just happens to in turn make my company stronger and bigger, right? You're not bothering people. You're not selling them something. You're not selling phone books. You're not, you know, selling them uh, vacuum cleaners door to door and you don't know if people even need or want them. You're giving somebody something they already contacted you with, they already told you they want, and you made them so happy when you did it. So get your mindset back around staying current with people because when you call somebody and, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so glad you called. You know, my windows are looking terrible. Oh, perfect timing. You make people so happy. They want the service. Nobody needs window cleaning. Nobody's upset when they get window cleaning. Everybody's happy if you're doing good work. So get over that mindset emails huge and it's free and you can send one out every couple weeks uh, once a month if you want 
You could send one out every week if you want to get a bunch of unsubscribes, right? What I do with emails, by the way, real quick, is I will always send new uh, current uh, specials if I have them, but I'm also sending stuff. So I'll send it up and be like, uh, in August, I'll send an email like, heads up, we're scheduling for gutter cleaning. Get in before the end of the year. Just, re- you know, in the email, it's going to be just respond to this. Email will get you in, blah, 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 right? Other services. Because if it in their brain and they see it come through and the, the name of the email makes them open it, it's just another way that you can soft look. They could, they could take 30 seconds, look at an email, and decide if they want to do something or not. Stay relevant. Stay in their brains, right? Another one is upsells. Upsells in general are one that people don't really like because they feel like, Again, there's a difference between bait and switch and upsell. If I have somebody call me and they want windows and I'm doing inside and outside, here's the price to show up and I go, hey, just so you know, we walked around the house and uh, I couldn't help but notice that your roof has some black streaks on that roof and I can see some debris in those gutters. I'd love to take care of that for you too. Um, is that something that you'd be interested in? And I could clean that roof and it would look brand new and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I give them the spiel. I give them the spiel, and then I can reschedule any different services that they have. Obviously, if it's a house wash, you want it before Windows, so you want to do the upsell before, but I can have all that out there. Hey, just so you know that uh, driveway is looking really dark, we can actually pressure wash that too. When we come back and do the roof and the gutters, we can hit that driveway. Oh gosh, yeah, get everything done, right? They already use your service. An upsell is letting them know the other services you do after they already have service with you. A lot of people don't go for an up close. They don't actually even offer it. I did a survey one time. I've mentioned this a hundred times, but so good. I did uh, 10 items on there and it was like everything from outside window cleaning, inside outside window cleaning, gutter cleaning, screen repair, screen cleaning, uh, roof clean. It was 10 things. I wanted 10 things just because I like even numbers, my percentages. The average number. I said, which of these services did you know that we did? That was all I asked. And then they would just give it back to us when we collected the check at the end, right? The average for that out of 10 services was three. And we advertise, I mean, at that point, I thought my my game was on. I did email blasts. I did, you know, postcards. I did stuffers. I did the envelopes were packed. I Every single, the literal, literal invoice that they had in their hand that this was given to them with had three sheets of three services. So if it was a fall cleaning, it was gutter cleaning, uh, snow removal, and usually like uh, window cleaning or something like that, or something separate. Three different services, and it changed, rotated. So spring was different than fall, blah, blah, blah. And still, out of all that, they only knew that we did three services out of 10. So when you think, oh man, I'm just hounding these people, I'm letting them, they don't care. They're not listening to you like you think they are. So you're not upsetting people by upselling. You're letting them know more and more. So upsells are huge. Increase your upsells. Get it out there. Let them know. Now, the biggest one that we can we can we can talk about is coming up. But this one is also uh, it is a paid way to to contact people, but it's a great way. Another low easy way to do things, and it's postcards. I would send out three or uh, four times a year, so quarterly, I would send out a postcard. And that postcard would just be a simple service with, uh, you know, existing customer deal on the back or something. Um, I would put some kind of um, service on there. I would do these little four by six postcards to all my existing customers, super cheap to send a postcard. Uh, At the time, it was like 29 cents, but I think it's a little more now. Send out a postcard just so that you can catch them in the email, you can catch them with the call, and then you can also catch them with the the mail. They may not read it and they may throw it away. Cool, but I have been in, I can't tell you how many houses where they got that postcard magneted to their fridge, right? You want to touch them everywhere you can without sounding illegal, but you do, right? And postcards are a great option. You don't have to go extravagant with this little reminder postcard. You can go big if you want. You're talking, you know, sense to change that but you can do as much or as little as you want and sending it to your list you already got the names 
All you have to do is pay the postage and printing is cheap. So postcards, don't forget postcards. Postcards are important. Anyway, okay. So this part here is my absolute favorite. And I didn't do it last, right? Because like there's like a bonus item in there. But this is one that I'm going to talk about. If you don't ever listen to anything I ever say, that's cool, by the way. I just appreciate you being here and I appreciate you listening. And I appreciate everybody who orders through me, literally. But if you ever want to listen to one thing I say, and just try it. Try it. I may not be a fool, right? You may like this. You may find it's absolutely amazing. It's going to be a little bit out of your comfort level, but I'm going to try to change that. It's called the dentist clothes, right? This is not something that everybody talks about in the window cleaning world. It's something that I did. Uh, it's something that I started implementing towards the end, so I didn't get to do a full rotation of it. But this is the greatest idea that the greatest concept for changing your company ever. This particular thing could literally double your company next year. Now, with this being said, obviously everything, it depends on how it's delivered. It depends on how the confidence, confidence is. You're the pro, you're the one with the confidence, right? But what it is, is called the dentist close. The dentist close is this. After the service is done, 99.9% .9 of you go, great. Well, let me know next time you need any uh, window cleaning and thank you very much. And then you have to spend a bunch of money and time trying to get them back for the next cleaning. We talked before about people who slip through the cracks. But the dentist clothes, do this for a week. Do this for two weeks. Put it out as a goal for you if you have staff, if you have uh, uh, crew chiefs. Do this for one or two weeks, and I'm telling you, this is huge. This is when you're done with service, everything, you walk around, okay, let's look, everything look good. Oh my gosh, they look so good, the windows look so good. Oh, great, thank you, Mrs. Jones, for letting us be able to do this, and really, really appreciate it. Um, now, for your next cleaning, did you wanna do in three months from now, or did you wanna wait six months? People go, ah, three months. I have a lot of people that do three months. But uh, you know what, uh, let's do six months. Okay, great, so that's gonna put you into October 21st. How does that fit for you? October 21st should be uh, between you know 10 and 11 a.m. Is that a good time? We'll remind you the week of, just so you know, no surprises, but uh, does that sound like it'll work? Yeah, yeah, actually that should work. Same time as what we're doing now, I know this works good for you, right? Now, you have, by the time you leave that job, that job on the calendar again for the next time. You've done zero to get that back on. You didn't get lost by them. You didn't get outsold by another company. You didn't get forgotten for three years. You got them on a regular rotation, even if. Let's throw crap numbers out there. By the way, this close works so well, you'll have literally 80, 90% of people schedule again. But say you got 50%. Say 50% of the people you brought that up to, put it on the calendar again. What if in a day you did four jobs? Maybe your day is not big. But out of those four jobs, two of them scheduled six months from now. That means that after doing a month of work at only 50%, you now have two solid weeks of fall booked with doing no work. It's going to be higher than that too. The amazing part of this is that if you don't do that, they will call you when they think they are ready. And the problem with when they think they're ready is they forget about you until it's so bad. People have to look out their windows. Oh yeah, our windows are clean because they're looking through windows, right? We look, at, we look at windows, they look through windows. If people look through the windows, it has to be so bad that they have to then think, oh gosh, I need a window cleaner. Well, that's like a year or two later. I want to have people way more often. I want to be able to have my calendar filled so that I know I can bring on more people. If I'm in growth mode, I know that, hey, you know what? All these closes mean my fall is almost full already and I'm like in May. 
Well, the problem is I need to have more staff, but I have all those people because I'm still getting new customers. I'm still going to catch the ones that fell through the cracks that didn't say, oh, you know what, right now I'm just, uh, I'm good. Uh, but uh, definitely call me in six months and we'll see, you know, I'm going to still be able to contact those ones and I'm still going to work the existing customers 10 times harder than I am the new customers. There's not any of you out there who have 100% return rate. I mean, regular, right? Maybe some, well, none of you have a 100% return rate just in general, but say you go, oh, most of my customers always come back. It's just, you know, sometimes it's a year, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's six months. You take control. This is your business. This is your business. Take control in a dentist clothes. I'm telling you, it will change your world. It will change your world. This is as big, if not bigger, I, an existing customers, this is big. This is just really, really big. So try it. I'm telling you, it's going to be way worth it. I'm telling you, it will change it. Try it for a week. I know it's uncomfortable in your head, but think about it like the dentist. No one, no one who's listening to this goes to the dentist and doesn't have their six-month checkup already there. Right? The big thing, the big thing is that you expect it not once have you ever gone to the dentist and i'm like all right so uh we're looking at six months from now is the same time of day good for you nobody's been like well, <laughs> i can't believe that you would make me come back here in six months everybody's like oh yeah okay cool yeah yeah let's uh let's do the same time it's six months from now so people just assume you know in six months they know it's it's such a genuinely amazing thing for your business so if you haven't done it do it. The dentist close. If you have done it or you're trying it, please tell me, reach out, text me, um, share it on YouTube, tag me on Facebook, something and tell me how awesome it works. Because I'm telling you, follow me on TikTok, by the way. I don't dance, but I'm trying to build TikTok up and I hate TikTok so much. But go tech. Anyway, there you go. Uh, the last thing, which is kind of like a bonus for this is is two two parts again we're only talking existing customers but it's plastic gift cards and reviews plastic gift cards by the way if you haven't heard of this is one of the greatest things that i have ever done for handing stuff out i get a sleeve of plastic cards they're custom printed plastic cards i made them look like credit cards right there's no raised anything. The magnetic strip on the back is literally a printed black line. You can't swipe it, but it's for $25. It could be for 50. It could be for whatever the dollar amount is, but it has to be something to make there be value, right? A plastic gift card is what I use as a business card. Every time somebody goes, can I get a business card? I always are like, oh uh, yeah, I don't have any business cards, but I do have these gift cards. I'll just give you one of those. Oh no, I no no I don't no no really. It's twenty five dollars off of a full interior and extra window cleaning. No, just take it here. Take two of them. Give one to your friend. Uh, let us know. Our websites on there. Our e phone numbers on. I put the information all on there, but it looks like a credit card. It looks like a gift card. Now, if you look in your wallet or your purse right now, you have gift cards in there that may only have a dollar eighty three on it but you still kept it because there's actual value. A coupon, there's no value. A coupon is only valued when you spend money. Think about that. There's no actual value to a coupon, right? Even if it's $20 towards service, but it's on a coupon, it instantly, which there are no coupons. like It's usually like, you know, save this or get this or here's a deal. But if you're going to save your 10% on a coupon, 10% has no value. It only has a reduced value when you spend money. If you give them money, $20, $25, they will keep it and they will want to use it. So it's a great, great thing, uh, plastic gift cards. But what I do is every time I finish a job, I give them plastic gift cards in their thing and say, hey, I gave you gift cards. One's for your next service, uh, but one is actually for you to give to your friends. You can give them both away if you want. That's it. People are like, oh, yeah, you're just giving away free money. Yeah. Guess what? If I'm scheduling somebody on a dentist close every three months or every six months, and the next time I go there, they remember that they have this uh, gift card. They give it to me and save 25 bucks. I don't care. I don't care. It's six months. 
just going from six months to once a year, just in order to use that again, is worth $25. It's $25 off. You're not actually losing money. You're just not making what you may have. But a gift card they want to give to somebody else, I always give them two gift cards. Awesome. And another one is reviews. You have the existing customers. They like, love you. They trust you. Why not get a review from them? Use a service, have them do Google, do whatever it is, but get them to review you because they already have used you. Those are bonus ones because they're quick, you know, kind of what it is on there. But a lot of people don't utilize the reviews. And I think that they're missing out. So, yeah. Go and do that. But, more importantly, I know you're listening right now. I know that we'll have 5,000 of you download this this week. And I know that all 5,000 of you are not subscribed to the American Window Cleaner magazine. AWC Magazine is a magazine that is made 100% for window cleaning. You're a window cleaner. This is your college. Get a subscription. It would be doing me an awesome favor, but it would be doing you more of a favor because you're going to be learning awesome things. You're getting into the culture. You're surrounding yourself in window cleaning, and you're going to get some cool stickers. Also, every sticker, by the way, comes like this in a plastic thing. Sticker sheet. Every single issue has a sticker sheet so get the sticker on another note i am a rep for windowcleaner.com that is how i make my cheddar so if you want to give me an awesome high five let me put your order in 862-312-2026 i want to be a rep i want to be a rep for everything window cleaning please do let me know and i even can help with anything that you need so 862-312-2026 shameless plugs done but if you're still here i really genuinely appreciate it i hope i hear from you soon Hope I see your name come across in the subscriptions. But until next week, go out there and try the dentist clothes. Try all this stuff. Let me know how it goes. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.